Quite a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Like, we did one last week, though, didn't we? We did. Can you remember? I do. <laughs> you do? I do remember. It was um, King of Fish. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Did you see his post? You talked about Meow, he did. Meow, he did. That's two. Um, I have to tell you, first of all, it, it's not a podcast by any, any way you look at it. And anyone listening to this, a lot of people listen to our shows, by the way. I, find, I found out when I was in Chicago a few weeks ago. Might surprise yeah. you. Yeah. No, it doesn't surprise me at all. No, it doesn't. <laughs> we, put, we put on a we could have, we put on a good non podcast. It's not a podcast. Yeah, we do it. We can do it. Yeah, we. You know what? We do put it on a good show. I think sometimes. Sometimes I say that, and the guest is like shit. <laughs> <laughs> right? I bet like, oh. I can't. I, yeah, I bet. Yeah. You look tired. I am tired. I was. I was. Um, I was just about to fall asleep, and I was like, "Oh no, I better." You were about to sleep through another show. No, not sleep. I've never slept through a a show. I've I've never slept through a show. You have. Yes, you have. You have. Yes, you have. I don't have the extinction of falling asleep on the show. You do. Okay, (laughs) you do that once. Okay, (laughs) just do it once, and it always comes and haunts you. Anyways, uh, welcome everyone to Late Night Restaurant Show. You know what? We have a great show tonight. I like talking a little tech because I have no clue about it really in the well, I, I see that, but I like the guest probably went out shit again. But we do like to talk about I just want to make sure we're live. I do like to talk about technology. It was my stroke moment. Um of what we do and stuff like this. We like talking about it. We like highlighting people that are changing the industry. And this guy is in this company that he has developed and founded, co founded. Unbelievable. You don't look excited, Dominic. I'm ex- I'm very excited because I I'm like you. I like, I, well, I know a little bit more th- about tech, but not as maybe not as much as you. But I like I like That's innovation. Exactly. I like that. Uh, I I like what he's doing and how he's helping. Uh, you know, make things easier for restaurants, which is cool. I need things. Yeah. We need it. Right? Yeah. We, oh, damn, for sure. I guarantee it. A lot of people selling computer systems probably are like, oh man, this guy's making it too easy for people. Yeah. What are you doing? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to we gotta get a new intro too. So this will be our last of our intro for this. But uh, we'll have a new intro made this weekend. So Yeah, you should see somebody did something for, for the Safe Check show. Man, that guy's on fire. We should hire him. Yeah, that one's a good one. That's a yeah. keeper. Anyways, everyone that's listening, make sure you're listening. But don't forget, this is not a podcast. Don't think it's a podcast. It hangs out with the other podcasts, but it's not a podcast at all. No. Dominic tries. You try it sometimes. I see you. <laughs> Anyways, our poor guest is probably like, can you please shut up and just play the damn <laughs> so you can come in here? Anyways, we'll be right back after this. Here we go. There you go. Welcome back. Sterling, welcome to the late night restaurant show. Yeah. Sterling, now, how me. are you, man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you guys, that's not nearly subtle enough. But no, no, it's, it's, no. it's great to be here. It's great yeah. to be here, Meow. Yeah, <laughs> right on. Welcome. Awesome. Welcome. Stuff. Sterling, yes. where are you? What uh, what city are you in? I'm in Denver. I'm in Denver today. Company is originally found in Chicago. I'm a Chicago boy, but couple of years ago moved out to denver so i could be a little closer to the mountains do some stuff outside be a little healthier is is denver the mile high city is that the name is that the or is that a different that's, place yeah, that's right that's thing. that's right i'm i'm literally almost exactly a mile high right now altitude yes. wise altitude <laughs> wise yeah they took us up on the <laughs> drinking <laughs> um D- denver's like the calgary south that we're like twin cities we're we're very similar same altitude. Oh, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah okay. Calgary's just really cool. I think it's the same. No, it's not probably not as cool as Denver. Like we got the Stampede. You guys got um, Temple Grandin, cool lady from from uh, Denver. <laughs> Who's that? Yeah, She's, we do. Um, do you know who Temple Grandin is? <laughs> no, no. no. She, she, um, I don't she, even she, know. She, Oh, if we're talking about sports or actors, no, I, uh, I have no clue. She's an animal welfare advocate. Okay. How did that, you was know going that? To, that was going to be my third guess, actually. Okay. If you just let me do one more. <laughs> you were going there? <laughs> so, but, Mal, you, you didn't let me go one more guess. So otherwise, no, I would have had it. Yeah. That's pretty <laughs> good. That was good. Sterling. <laughs> um. Co-founder of Chowley. Chowley. We said that together. That was kind of yeah. Weird. That's pretty cool. Tell us what when Jay told me, I was like, "That's cool. That that probably saves restaurants." Well, just I just like I was thinking about all the all like you go into these places and you see they got four or five different devices plugged in, mm -hmm. and it's like mm -hmm. holy crap! And it, right next door, uh, Jay to our offices in uh, in Richard's place. He's, there's like three tablets and they're, you know, they're all, they're just a mess. Right. So tell us, tell us about what you do, man. Yeah. Like Charlie's a, it's an off-premise platform for S and B restaurants. So we help smaller operators handle anything on the off-premise side. Uh, we started with a big focus on the third party marketplaces, you know, basically getting rid of the tablets so that orders would go directly into the point of sale without manual data entry. And over the years have expanded to do first party online ordering digital marketing, dynamic pricing for about 17,000 restaurants across the U.S. and Canada. That's it. Only 17,000. Wow. Only 17. Couldn't get 18, eh, bud? We're cool. working on it. We're almost 17,000. Good. Good for you. Awesome. Where did you start? It's yeah, awesome. awesome. Uh, I started the company like seven, eight years ago. Uh, Justin <laughs> and I started it together. What? Um, That's pretty good, man. That's pretty well, good. I guess the question is what sparked the uh, – what sparked – what was the spark that said, hey, we need a fix here? <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, well, the first company I started failed, partly because it couldn't do integration. So that kind of oh. led me to discover the uh, the problem that restaurants had. I was working on a bar app. It was, like, uh, it was like mobile ordering at bars, put QR codes on tables, order a drink on your phone, and let's bring it to the table. You can pick it up at the bar. Uh, but like you said, the company failed after six months, but we built a point of sale integration. And uh, we never even launched it. And then one of the guys was like, well, why don't you just integrate Grubhub orders? If you could do that, that'd be way easier. Uh, he was right. Um, and so that's how we started Chally. It was back in, right at the beginning of 2016. Cool. Good for you, man. Yeah, that's impressive. So like, again, Jay, the, the story of like the pivot, right? Like in uh, almost everybody we talked to is like, hey, where did you start? And even last week, they started as a, it started as a, a gambling uh a bookie, a bookie joint with the, the fish as the as the storefront. <laughs> <laughs> that story. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm so sorry, Sterling. <laughs> I, I'm just trying to keep up. I'm just trying to keep up with you guys. I I would say that it wasn't a pivot. I would say it was just a complete fail. <laughs> yeah, we the, the company failed. It had a distinct end. And then we started something new that was better. You know, I, I, I don't, I would, I would, there's a hard start and stop there. My, yeah, my company was like that. We, we failed as a cleaning company. We became a training company. Okay. So true, true you story, Jay. You never yeah. told me that story. Well, hey. I told you yeah. all the restaurants I bombed. Yeah. Early, well. and didn't you finally, like a year later, tell me this on a show? <laughs> It's been holding out on you, making you feel like you know you're, you're the only one on this show that fails. Like he's been up yeah, into the right. Know. He's been just riding the coattails on the failure Un until this one moment where he's now revealed that to you. How does that make you feel? Are you okay? I'm okay. I'll, I'll make it through. Okay. So Sterling, tell, tell us about Chowley. You know what? I, I saw you at this show in Chicago, and it was very awesome to meet you in person. And first of all, there's so many people wanting to meet you. It must have been crazy. But tell us more about you got you guys integrate with menus. You help people with menus. Tell us all the other things that you guys do. Cause you're not just what you just said. You do a lot more. 
Yeah, no, we help restaurants with really anything outside of the four walls. I mean, we help restaurants um, get set up with Google ads, with Facebook oh, wow. and Instagram ads. We help them with organic social posts, email marketing, listings management, reviews and ratings, uh, first party online ordering, third party online ordering, and um, some nice reporting that comes in um, uh, alongside all of our tools. Wow. And they wash that's, dishes. That's it. And they that's wash it. dishes. No, I wash. I washed it. That's the only <laughs> job I can do in a restaurant. <laughs> Just wait. Dominic's going to talk about his days of being a baker soon. So don't worry. No, I ain't, I ain't bringing it up. <laughs> You're not bringing I was a crappy baker. I've told you many times. I was. I sucked at baking. I was better at eating bread. I was. I was good at like. Take, oh, I. If eating in a restaurant was a job, I would be much better at that. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. washing dishes is the one thing that I, I don't. I can't really screw up. So. That's really the only thing that I'd want to do. So Sterling, cool. how many, how many restaurants you find need help your help in a sense, or help out there? <laughs> well, I'm going to start, start with 17,000, but after well, that, I know it's a lot of help, but I'm just <laughs> saying like, how many do you find that you come across that are completely out there just trying to do it on their own? Um, I think a, a lot, like the, most people get into the restaurant space, first of all, by accident, but also they get in because they are great with customers. They're great with food like that. It's a creative job, especially when, when chefs start restaurants. So they get into it for that reason. It's not like you're an amazing marketer and you're like, I'm going to start a restaurant, mm -hmm. uh, right? Or I'm an amazing IT person. I'm going to start a restaurant. Like, And so anything that's on the tech side or on the marketing side, like there are a lot of groups that um, that need that. Some of them have it set or some of them, maybe they don't want to grow a ton. I'm not going to claim that we're a fit for everybody. Um, I actually try really hard not to be everything for everybody. But for restaurants that are trying to grow and trying to expand and, and trying to improve, you know, marketing or their tech stack, I mean, we're we're a great option for them to talk to. Cool. Well, pretty cool. It's, it is really cool. Like, you know, the thing I like, Dominic, is when we have people on like Sterling here, I'm just impressed how innovative you guys are like it's impre it's impressive it really is yeah, I, I agree i i find that really cool and that i think the the i i like the hey i call it a pivot you call it a fail i i like that <laughs> out of but sort of sort of out of the out of the ashes you know rises something right hey we and and the the cool the even the cooler thing is somebody identified it for you right somebody said hey you should do this you can do this yeah. you've done this you have this can you um was that a restaurant you were working with that said can you put can you integrate grubhub for us yeah yeah no i mean mo i i learned from one of the one of the best learnings i had from the first company was that you need to spend more time talking to customers about problems than you figure out how to solve them the first company i was very much i had a solution in my head that i was trying mm -hmm. to kind of like push and so in this case, it was really chasing the problem and talking yeah, to restaurant fun. operators. So like, yeah, I, I asked them because I didn't know that was a problem. And I asked them and they're like, yeah, this is a huge problem. We'd pay a bunch of money for a solution. Um, so from there, that was that was kind of how, how Charlie got started. But one thing you said that being innovative is cool. Um, it's also really freaking hard. Um, uh, especially the, when other companies don't want you to be innovative. So when we first oh. started, like we were two weeks into the business, we already got our first cease and desist order from a giant company who wanted us there to stop is. what we were doing. Yeah. And then we ended up getting like 11 more. Uh, we haven't gotten one in, in a while, but when we first started the, the, a lot of the tech companies didn't want us to exist. Um, so it was very much like an uphill battle um, to try to get the tech working on behalf of the restaurants that we were serving. We're trying to get Stephen Colbert to give us one because of our late night show. But we got <laughs> yeah. <three. laughs> we're still working on it. Hey, don't, don't see. Okay. The and assist. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I, was, I, was just a, I was a little behind there. Jay, yeah. sorry. You have to say it's the, the camera's not working or something like that. <laughs> it's the tech. It's the internet. Um, Sterling, tell me more. There's one thing I noticed on your website that just got me curious. Smart pricing. You guys offer smart <laughs> pricing. It's not like a commercial. You offer <laughs> smart pricing. What is this? What is this? Possibly for restaurants <laughs> like you. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a dynamic <laughs> pricing tool. Um, this cool. is uh, We made, made a lot of noise at the National Restaurant Show 
uh, mostly because I was, you know, I was giving it to Wendy's. But um, look, all, uh, smart pricing, we're just basically trying to uh, increase prices for restaurants when demand is spiking. So if we know it's wow. 6 p.m. on a Friday and it's raining, we know that the demand for delivery is going to increase. So we'll increase the prices on their menu to reflect that because they're going to be busier. It's going to be harder for them to execute. Um, so this way they can get basically more profit, you know, in their pockets. And we're not um, talking like huge jumps either, right? These are just little, little bumps. I would say um, almost all of the bumps are going to be between 10 and 30%. 30% is the highest um, that, that we have on the platform. So these are, these are smaller things, but they can make a, a, a meaningful difference, especially when you're talking about profits. This isn't just mm -hmm. about sales. It's a price increase that your food cost isn't going up for this. Your labor cost isn't going up for this. So it's just pure profit. Um, and look, a lot of these restaurants, they're going to bring in 10, 20, 30 K this year wow. in pure profit. And all they had to do was basically flip the switch. So that's money that goes right to the bottom line. They can, they can share it with the team. They can put it towards their boat payment, you know, whatever they want to do, that's money in their pocket. Um, so it's a tool that we like Wendy's made a big deal, uh, or there was a big deal made about Wendy's testing it out. And then Wendy's kind of was like, we're only using it to lower prices during slow periods. And I was like, you should raise it during busy periods too. Like, well, and, that, and that's, yeah, that's the exact, that's the, you know, at some point, you know, that's coming. And mm -hmm. I think for, for people that are listening, like almost every industry has smart pr pricing, right? Try a plane. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, a hotel, right? I don't yeah, for planes. As much as I'd yeah, every, everybody has, there's so many other industries that have it. It's normal, but you know, restaurants for some reason, especially smaller operators, I always feel like it held to an unfair standard. Um, and so there's a lot of uproar over it, but, but I, be... I, why, why can't they do it? They're just like any other business. The other thing that we, that we do, ours is only on the marketplaces. If you order direct, you, you, you don't deal with the same price changes. Oh. So like there's like, it's only the third party. Like it's only like if you're ordering to like Grubhub, Uber, DoorDash, or those. Yeah, no, um, I don't. I don't know if those guys are putting up a stink about it, but they're they are, really? and, well, and they shouldn't be, right? Because they're they're notorious yeah. for it. They're well, they're they're the they're the ones that screw around just, with the pricing. Just, just, I, just FYI, we have one of them coming on the show soon, so keep it gentle. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to name names, but um, we had a we had a fee on on something some stuff we do, and when they went to to pay their invoice they called and said hey what's this fee and it's like well that's the credit card processing fee well we don't pay that it's like what do you mean you don't pay it well we're not paying it because we're x and i said f you i don't care who you are like the, really? the, the guy that spends 25 bucks is paying it you can pay it too it's like well we and then this whole thing and i just said hey i noticed on my bill the other night that you had this fee this service fee of four dollars for my order. What's that for? And it's well, that's if uh, if there's a return, and you know, blah blah blah. And it's like, well, but the restaurant pays for that. Do you give the restaurant that four bucks? No, no, we don't. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I, I agree that it's it's unfair for it's unfair for. For the for the tech giants to dictate what's right or wrong for the for the for the independent mom and pop. Well, here's my theory, Sir Sterling, on this is here's what I find a lot of the times that happens when we have big stinks like this and, and these things. And I didn't say I think it's already gone, but it's the problem of telling people why. Right? Is if we don't define why or why the reason behind it is, like we educate the people on it for them to make the decision. A lot of the times, like Wendy's, it, it went out and then everything went up there and they could have just came out and said, here's why and explained it and told the bottom line reason. It always works. It works every time you nip it with the direct message of what it is and what we're trying to do here. And the fact that reeducating the public on how much poor restaurants make is very yeah, really. margin might get people to go, you know what? Not a bad freaking idea. 
But yeah, that's they're the all, problem. They're, all, they're all millionaires, man. Yeah, millionaires, exactly. CEOs of two location restaurants. Right? Exactly. Like, <laughs> they drive the the Hummer and the be- the Beamer and all those things, right? Like, <laughs> it's it's that's the thing I find a lot of the times these things happen is when we don't come out and talk and talk about it. And I could go back in history many times that when we get a big stink of it, we we have one opinion. We 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 create these opinions in our heads. And then we get mad. Well, I think sometimes it's the media, Jay, that makes. Oh, absolutely! Like, like they, you know, sometimes why wouldn't they bring up the airlines and say the airlines do it? And by hundreds of dollars, the closer you get to the, you know, twenty years ago, standby tickets used to be less money. Are they more now? That you can't get a standby ticket in Canada anyway. I like if you're going last minute, ticket. I don't think so. You're paying. You're paying more if you're if you're booking on the same day. Oh yeah. Here, you're you're paying way way more. Even a couple days before, I just did exactly that. Pay more up here. It's I don't know Sterling. Like your your airline different uh, systems. Your your market's quite a bit different than ours because there's lots of choice. But in ours there there isn't, and you you pay triple the money if you book like a week in a deal. Oh yeah. Deal. Oh so, man, if you if you book on a Saturday versus booking on a Tuesday, you'll pay more. Like even the day of the week, it matters. Like it's oh, wow. they're they're constantly in flux. Yeah. So the whole, I, I think the media, I, I think the media beats up on the restaurant industry, you know, a little bit. I think there's a to to your point, you know, they they think that every every restaurant owner is a millionaire, and it's probably you know less than one percent are. It's probably even less than that, um, mm-hmm. you know. That that are have made it and made it big. Most of them are small. They're they're sort of making a living, and it's and getting harder and harder for them. So and they sacrificed a lot to. And they sacrificed a lot exactly. Right. I talked so to, yeah, talk need... to tons of operators that it takes two years for them to stop losing money in the restaurant before <laughs> they like they're if negative you're lucky, If you're lucky, if they're you're lucky, well, we are. The yeah, old saying is you want to be, you know, how do you make $2 million in a, in the industry? You start with three. Yeah. Right? Like, line. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. right? They are, they are, they, it is, a, they are amazing business models. I was talking about this with an operator today where it, it, it can take two years. It can take four years, but man, once you have it humming, once you, once you understand your customers, yeah. you get the staff, right. You, you understand um, your strategies and then all of a sudden they can turn into like these fantastic uh, cash flow generating businesses that can then either help fund more restaurants or I know a lot of restaurants who go into real estate development, leveraging the cash flow from them. But it, it's it's a much harder business to get right. And it usually takes a lot longer for, for yeah. a lot of these uh, owners to get there. One question that Dominic usually asks, and we always ask this, and this is a tough one, Sterling. Mm. I'm ready. It's just how much is a how much is a program like this of using Chowley costs or an average operator? See, so Dominic, yeah. I, beat you, I beat you to the question on this. Thanks, one. Jay. Meow. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are really bad at that, but uh, they, uh, no, totally, totally fair question. It um, it's a bit like I described at the beginning of the the show. I, I described like a lot of services, so obviously it depends on like which services that you're using. Um, but for the most part, if you're looking for third party and if you're looking for the marketplaces and you're looking for first party ordering, which is a common package for us, anywhere between 150, 200 bucks a month, you know, for that, oh, all of our, all of our contracts are month to month. Uh, we don't charge a percentage of sales or anything like that. Um, a lot of times we work wow. with the existing payment processors, um, on the digital marketing side, um, that one, you're going to be looking closer to about $500 a month, roughly. Um, give or take. Uh, and that one, just to put in perspective, we're basically replacing a digital marketing agency, which is often charging between three and five thousand dollars a month. Holy that's but, it. But because we it's all we do, right? All we do is restaurants. We we know what playbooks work. We know if a restaurant has an awareness problem versus an acquisition problem, if they're doing new stores, we have new store opening playbooks. Um, this is stuff that like, as you start going through it, you collect a ton of data that informs kind of, you know, what you need to do. So it's a, it's a bit more replica, uh, replicable for us to do. And, and that's how we're able to kind of provide it at that lower price. So if you did all the services, you're like 
how much like for, for if everything you offered if we did it all well how much is it <laughs> the full uh, meal every every single thing dynamic pricing first party ordering third party marketplaces all the digital marketing tools yeah i mean you're probably looking between 750 and a thousand bucks a month if you wanted to do all of that yeah how many people it's is that? awesome no i think well i, I think the pricing is awesome because it's, it's, it's the phenomenal. back to what people people don't know what's out there and what the value is. First off, they're not doing digital marketing, so for five hundred bucks a month, I, I I could get in, or even if it was seven fifty or a thousand a month, I could get in right now and start, and you'd start doing it, and you know what you're doing, and you're not teaching. And, and, and he's not wasting your time, or you're right, you're not your teaching plan. somebody about what your yeah, business is. Right? I, yeah. I, I, everything we do is done for you too. We we take on all the heavy lift on the digital marketing side. The only thing you have to do is hit a green check or a red X. Hey. Here's what we're going to post for this month for social. Here's what we're going to no do way. for the ads. Do you like it? Great. That's all you do. You're done. It's a very done I mean, for you. Like we like restaurants. There's, these are some of the busiest people on earth. They don't need to be updating their hours on Google or like doing all these things. Like they need to be in front of their customers and with their team. So we can just take that off their hands. Cool. Dominic, another winner, chicken dinner. Yeah. You hit it, Jay. You hit it. Yeah. Um, I mean, and I guess as far as the integration to the POS systems, I do have a question. He doesn't listen to me. No. Yeah, I, know he's he's right, right. I was going to say, because he doesn't know when you say I was batting 100, it means like all the guests I've had are exactly like you. You guys are incredible. Your pricing is incredible. And you offer solutions to operators that really blows Dominic's mind usually. Well, and, and the value is good. I, I like, I'm, I, yeah. this is like, I really think, um, <laughs> I was speaking with somebody at Restaurants Canada there, Jay, the other day. The, the that was people, like three months ago. No, no, yesterday. Oh. Okay. Dude, we so got not, at the, not at the show. but at, No, but at, I think, like, <laughs> you were at the restaurant show, right, uh, Sterling? But yep. people, if they don't go to these trade shows, if they don't listen to a podcast or they don't go and do a search, they're stuck in there in their lane with, with whatever they know. And it might be from 10 years ago, right? Yeah. Oh, a digital market agency 10 years ago, that was 5,000 bucks a month, right? It's like, holy fuck, I can't afford that. So, but now here you are 10 years later, if you went out and looked a little bit, oh, yeah. here's, here's a guy that's doing it for you. And they're doing this other stuff that helps my restaurant, right? I Brilliant. think the big, the, the, the integration to the POS it's obviously a big one, but Jay, you've talked about this a lot on the marketing side. A lot of restaurants don't do anything. And no, if they do anything, no. they do it very shittily. It's really bad, right? Well, well, shittily. We got a shittily. Word. You have a stroke. I, it's, it's I like, just, uh, it's so you guys crap. didn't tell me whether I could swear on this or not. So I was <laughs> swear away, buddy. Safe. Well, uh, I see Italian. You know, like <laughs> we do a wellness check on them once in a while too. Um, but I do have to, I have to say, but the restaurateurs, they didn't go to school for marketing right? and they didn't go to school usually for business. Cause I always say if they did business school, they teach you not to open a restaurant. <laughs> right? Like, so I do, I do have to say that they, and they try so hard. And then unfortunately there was a period of time when social was coming out. A lot of people took advantage of these poor people. Mm -hmm. and and totally hose them on pricing so they have a bad taste on their mouth they can't trust anyone when it comes into the social aspects and then they try to do it themselves and then it's a sad damn picture of the plate over top picture you know the the horrible one with the asparagus you know the dead looking at green beans <laughs> and shit. like that's and that's what they're trying to do and they're just doing the best they can and i feel bad for them every time i see these posts i just cringe because they're they're doing the best they know and and then fortunately they just there's no trust. So that's why it's great having having companies like Charlie and stuff like this to be able to provide people with that security. And I'm sure you got like examples up the Wahoo with seventeen thousand customers. That's the Wait. beauty. That's where we have to move. We have to do more shows like this, Dominic, because we need to tell the world about Chowley and Sterling and what he's doing because it's so important. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, and, and, and they can't it's it's it. We had a new head of marketing come in a few months ago, and as she was talking to customers, she was she was kind of hitting the same point you're talking about. Like, just tell, give all the examples. We had a five yeah. location ice cream store when they switched our online ordering, they their sales just doubled, like immediately. 
And the, like, if you just looked at the previous 30 days and the next 30 days, like they just doubled. And that was mostly due to conversion rates. I mean, their, their last, uh, their last site was a little clunky. Um, it didn't have like some of the digital wallet stuff on it. And so when they switched to us, it was literally people that were still visiting their site. Just more of them converted to orders. We've had, did, we've had guys in the dynamic pricing side, like I said, put $10,000 in their pocket at the end of the year for doing nothing but flipping a switch. I talked to a group uh, either today or yesterday. They've never done digital marketing before. It's been a completely <laughs> word of mouth. They've been in business for seven years and they were finally, they're starting to see sales dip. Uh, so we turned them on in February and in March, they saw a 10% lift in sales. And in April, they saw another 10% lift in sales. And then in May, they saw another 10%. So they're 30% in their sales. In just a 90 day period, just from doing digital marketing for the same time. And this is a single location group. The owner's still cooking all the food. It's a great barbecue spot. Um, and like these are these are the things, these are the these are the stories where technology can be so Huge. helpful for restaurants as long as it's done right. Dominic, you're supposed to have a bigger wow on your well, face. I, what I was going to ask, oh, well, I know, a, I know, a, I know a customer that needs him. That's huge. Uh, we talked, we talked about the digital marketing stuff with with a friend of mine. They they need your service, and there's, there's like probably 90 percent well, of the restaurants. Me and Jay know this. Like probably at least fifty percent are doing nothing. I bet you fifty percent do. No, zero. no, I'm going to say seventy five. There you go. Exactly. Um, yeah. In Canada, when, it might be different in the states. But it's probably Canada, the same. It might be worse. Oh no, the, the U.S. has got. I think they got a little ahead of us, right? You know. Yes, yes, a lot of chains too. I mean, about half of our half yeah. of our restaurant locations come from like the top five hundred largest chains, and yeah. I don't know if I there think, are a ton of Canadian chains. Are there? I know like Timmy Ho's, but are there are there a bunch of other other ones. Other ones? Well, we have the well, that'd, we, be, that'd be the one, I guess. It's, it's hard to get out of the igloos once in a while, but. <laughs> 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 what um our chains are you, for restaurants when you when you, when you sled down your front yard into town and and go to the <laughs> local restaurant and then take the chairlift back home like you for your to-go food i assume there's a lot of marketing involved there. yeah there is for sure but you gotta I, you gotta be able to you gotta be able to like sky you know right in the sky and and um yeah. right in the snow on the marketing side, like the digital stuff. <laughs> You're watching the Flintstone still, aren't you? <laughs> um, Jay, I got a question for Sterling. Do not interrupt me this time. <laughs> uh, Sterling, um, when you integrate into a POS, it, so does the POS have to have an open API? Like what's the limitation on, on what point of sale systems you can or cannot is is like that might be a, a sticking point i'm thinking yeah 100. this is the same question you tried to ask like 20 minutes ago right yeah for sure before you got interrupted three times in a row yeah well, i would think it was like seven times but jay, 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 jay did it he has a, he has a magic way of doing that all right well I'll make, I'll make sure to give you an answer uh yeah look i i would love it if every point of sale had an open api and, and there was a nice standard that everybody followed uh -huh. and that all integrations were created equal. Uh, the reality is that that's just not the case. Um, and we're we're trying to be part of the solution there. Um, we we have an open API, um, but oh, cool. look, the, an integration you know with Toast is going to be slightly different than the integration that we have with Clover. Um, all these integrations are built differently. The point of sales give you different access. They have different ways of organizing their menus. Uh, sometimes they they support certain features. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're on the roadmap. Sometimes they're just, you know, um, infrastructural decisions they made. So they'll never be able to to provide some feature or some way of doing things. But over the years, it's gotten a ton better. Okay. Um, and and it is the the parity on that's coming, especially on the ordering side is just it is miles and miles ahead of where it was when we first started when we first started toast toast was small toast only had a few hundred locations live we were one of their first partners oh wow um, and they actually built and developed their ordering api with us and we we gave them feedback and actually helped them build that first api um because there just weren't a lot of good examples in the space 
So when you look at it now, for the most part, you get a lot of the basics are are there. You know, nested modifiers. You know, are, are there across the board? The ability to tender order types. Uh, in it being able to uh, pull pictures and descriptions from the point of sale. Um, all that's like fairly uniform now. So we're getting a lot better. Uh, we have sixty three or sixty four point of sales uh, that oh, are wow. fully integrated with our platform mm, today. Nice. Um, we have all the major ones, um, and then we've got a whole lot of, of new ones, and we have an open API that, you know, every month we're, we're adding a, another couple here and there. Cool. Wow. Um, is there a cost to the restaurant uh, for that integration, like a setup <laughs> yeah. fee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, well, like a setup fee. Uh, yeah, we do. We do charge a setup fee. It's mostly just to get all the initial stuff set up. Like I said, we do everything for the restaurant. Um, so there is a little bit of a cost to it on that initial setup side. Um, but in terms of in the old days, you know, back four or five years ago, um, a lot of times point of sale systems would basically charge the restaurant for the additional connections they have with partners like us mm -hmm. and so there'd be like per transaction fees and then partners like us we're like well that's not how we charge so we'd pass it on to the to the restaurant and there's this whole weird circular um thing and those have those have become fewer and fewer since that's there's still good. Some, some out there which um is, is a little annoying i mean what we ended up doing because the, the whole underlying premise is that if you're a point of sale company, you have to spend money to like keep the up the API up to date. There's hosting costs. Like Par Brink has a billion API calls from partners every day, mm -hmm. um, and like there's a cost associated with that. And so what what we did um, is we just said, oh, all right, so there's a cost to do that. So the partners integrate to us. We'll charge them a monthly fee. It doesn't matter whether they have a thousand locations with us or one location. And that's how we can then have a team dedicated to it. That team can answer questions that our partners have. We can continue nice. to invest in this API. And it's such a, it was one of those things that you would hear people in the early days be like, why don't companies do it this way? And then be like, I have no idea. And then when we ended up getting the opportunity to make that decision, it was like, oh, all right, well, let's do it that way. Let's yeah. let's let's nice. let's have let's have some common sense and not try to scrape every single penny and dollar um, out of these businesses that already have slim margins. Yeah, again, again, Jay, you, you hit it hundred percent. Like, I I like it's what I people do. like Sterling that do it that way because they're they're back to you're speaking to your customer and you're understanding their pain, which is we don't we we a we can't get nickels and dimes to death. We don't have it right? We don't like it as customers. Those people that are charging it don't like paying it when they're out in the real world, but they're, you know, they're part of the problem. So when you, when you kind of take a stand and you say, Hey, we're going to do it. We're going to, whether you have one location or a thousand, we've got this very simple flat fee to do it. We've got month to month pricing. We're not tying into any contract. It's just yeah. good, clean business. If you suck at it, they ain't coming back. If you're good at it, they they your your seventeen thousand customers. Many of them are probably your first time customers. I'm assuming. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah just, we had um, yeah. It, it was interesting too when we um, uh, when we first rolled out kind of like our first new product because that back, like for we we just tried to do one thing really really well as long as we could. The first See, Dominic, I've been telling you that for years. <laughs> You've been telling me what, Jay? Just do one thing really well. Just do one thing really, <laughs> really, really well, and just like stick stick to that. But I, for the first six years, the business that's all we did. We just integrated third party marketplaces into point of sale system. It wasn't until the last couple years that we've been starting to expand our product lines, and we've kept a very similar approach to our customers. Make it really easy to go live. Keep it as simple as possible. Do as much of the work as you can, um, and have flat month-to-month -month products. But the interesting problem that that presented is that all of a sudden we had partners who were competitors. <laughs> so we had a partner who's doing first-party online ordering, yep. right? So that's direct ordering. It's right on your website, and they were using our API to integrate into the point-of-sale system. We have over three hundred ordering partners on that side. 
But then we started doing first party ordering. And so now it was competitive. And so this was another situation where I've seen point of sale systems go through the same, same mm -hmm. situation. And I always wondered, why don't you just build your online ordering on the same API that you give access to your partners, give everyone a level playing field and let the best product win. And so when we were presented with an opportunity to make a decision there, that's what we did. So our first party ordering mm -hmm. is built off of the exact same API that we give access to 300 other partners. And look, there are restaurants where their products are going to be a better fit than our tool. Like I said, we are not everything for everyone. Man, if you if you're a pizza place, pizza's, pizza's fucking different. Like it, pizza is just purely different. And so there are online ordering platforms that are much more dedicated to that niche that might do a better job than us. In which case, they should still be able to wow. use our integration. I don't hear that too often, do you, Dominic? No, that's good no. stuff. That's good shit. You okay? Yeah, Dominic, I'm okay. Well, little wellness yeah, I'm check. Okay. Okay. Well, let's check. Well, Sterling, you know what? It has been an absolute pleasure to get to know you and to hear about Charlie. Honestly, I foresee another one here, Dominic, that is going to be everywhere. If you're not already, 70,000 locations make you everywhere, kind of. But I really see every restaurant really taking advantage of what you offer, Sterling. I just want to thank you for your time and incredible program here. I love the simplicity of it as well and, and the cost, Dominic. Well, even you know what? Even if they didn't go We're for the labor you know, problem in the industry by having our show, yeah. Can you yeah. Um, do? Oh, it, shit. Can people there sign up go. just for digital marketing versus the integration? Yes, uh, on its own. Cool. Okay. You didn't. You didn't hear that earlier, did you? I don't. I don't remember him. I don't remember. I didn't, I didn't know if it was like an add-on or you had to do one or the other. But, but the the cool part of that is for five hundred or seven fifty a month. Uh, it's less than that, actually. You're doing all of the digital marketing, and then um, you said you built a website. Is that separate from that? Yeah, so the online ordering site. Um, so right. oh, okay. I, I, was, I said digital marketing works even better when you pair it with our first party sure. ordering because yeah. we can do full ad attribution. So if you do, okay. like, you like run a Google ad, you put five hundred bucks into it for a month. We because we also do the online ordering. We can then track that entire diner life cycle. Yeah. So we can oh, see wow. here are literally the like 18 customers that ordered two grand worth of food and you got them directly linked to this $500 ad spend. So you got a 4X return. Like, so they, they pair together really, really well. Uh, but cool. you don't technically, you don't have to, uh, you know, have them together right now. Nice. Pretty impressive. Yeah, it is very impressive. Well, Sterling, absolute honor, blessed, happy, very grateful. Everything between Dominic. Yeah, very cool. Jared, um, congrats for for finding another winner. The winner, another winner. Well, and uh, Dominic, don't do where can you find it? Because you know why people just Google shit, buddy. Sorry. No, well, just, just, what is it? Is it maybe it's Charlie dot. Uh, Maybe it's Charlie dot uh, I O or something, right? Oh, it's not org or something. This he's got the dot com. We 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 do have we do own Charlie dot I O as well, See? but that's different. <laughs> uh, but it, no, it's 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 Charlie dot com. Google Charlie. Touche. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right? uh, all, all all the socials. Uh, I post on LinkedIn a ton too. If you if you want to hear me post and complain about restaurants and restaurant tech. There you go. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Well, all the best. Please don't go away. Just hang in the green room there. I have a little surprise for you, Sterling. And Dominic, awesome. and uh, thanks again. And uh, let's wrap up here, Dominic. Once again, home run. Yeah. Mm. Home yeah, run take, here. take a bow, Jay. Yeah, once again, that's like, I don't know how many shows we've done. You should probably count one day. Six or 7,000, I think. We're, we're <laughs> way up there. Way up take there. a bow. You, you've, 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 done, you've done awesome again. Crush it again. Crush it again. Yeah. Crush it again. But anyways, but, uh, when we talk to Sterling off air, he's going to say, yeah, I, I bumped into Jay. You know, and <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we got the count of the meow up. Yeah. Suck at that. Not very good at that. But anyways, thanks again, Dominic and Sterling. Don't go anywhere in the green room and to everyone else, please watch tomorrow. We, I don't know if we got a show tomorrow night. We might have to run a rerun <laughs> anyways. Yeah. 
um, listen to our show, late night restaurant show on every social channel out there, or like I tell Dominic, just Google it like everyone else does. Um, there you go. Anything else, Dominic, you want to say? No, thanks. Thanks, Jay. You're going to go make good, a sandwich good, now? Good, good being back with you. Yeah. I know. Are you going to go make a sandwich? No. We should, we should do a cooking show together with you. Oh, yeah. That'd be terrible. I'm going to make bread. I'm going to make bread. <laughs> I'm going to make bread with Dominic. Two hours long. Anyways. Get there all my go. food safety. People be pointing out all my food safety. Exactly all the wrong things, eh? Absolutely right. not. We, we won't be doing that, man. <laughs> Have a great evening, everyone. Just here. Just